um, multi-resource package scheduling, and this is a uh, um, joint work with my two supervisors, Professor Bao Chun Li and Professor Ben Liang. Um, so first of all, I'd like to introduce some of the uh, backgrounds. So uh, network appliances or middle boxes right now are almost everywhere um, in today's data center or enterprise networks. And according to some recent reports, the sheer number of middle boxes is already on par with traditional switches and routers. And as you can see, um, these middle boxes they usually perform a wide range of critical network functions such as uh, one optimization, intrusion detection and prevention, uh, and maybe load balancing and so on and so forth. Um, it turns out that um, unlike traditional switches and routers, these middle boxes they perform deep packet processing based on the packet contents. So and that requires uh, consuming multiple middle box resources like the CPU, like the uh, uh, link bandwidth. So for example, if you're going to uh, do some uh, intrusion detection uh, systems, then you have to take a look at the packet payload and you have to analyze if this is a attacking or not. That will consume the CPU resources. And then after that, you, you are going to decide if, if you want to forward it to the next hall, then you are going to consume some ban link bandwidth. Okay? And it turns out that different flows may have different resource demands depending on its actual network functionality is applied to it. So, for example, the basic forwarding, uh, we just need to forward the packet to the next, next hop. So it, it's usually bandwidth intensive, but for other like uh, uh, IP security encryptions, it, then usually you need to uh, apply some encryption algorithm that will consume a lot of CPU resources. So the recent paper has, uh, has done some very good works to uh, further uh, confirm that depending on the different middle box modules, the uh, resource consumption is really different. Okay. All right, so given this heterogeneous uh, resource demand, one important question is how can we let flows fairly share these multiple middle box resources for their packet processing? So let's uh, that's require, that requires uh, a fair training algorithm, but works on multiple resources. So first of all, we require fairness. Um, so which means that each flow should receive um, the service. The service here means the throughput. That is at least at a level when each of the middle box resources is equally allocated. So which means that it's, suppose you have two, two flows competing for two middle box resources, the CPU and the balance. And you have to guarantee that each flow uh, should receive half of the CPU and half of the uh, link, link bandwidth. I mean, the, the throughput level should be at least at this level. Okay. Um, the other thing is uh, we also want the scaling algorithm to have some low complexity so that we can make scaling decisions at the high speeds. Okay. This is also very important um, given that uh, we have uh, increasing line rates today. And finally, we would like to have a very simple uh, scaling algorithm that, are, that, that can be easily implemented using either hardware or some software. So, however, let's take a look at the, the state of the art design. So we know that fail queuing algorithms have been extensively discussed in the literature for decades. And, but they are only for the single resources, that is the outgoing balance. The reason is, traditionally, the switches and routers, the, the Oh, the, the only function that they, they, they do is um, they forward the packet to the next hall. So in this case, the only number resource is the link balance. And we have a lot of algorithms here. So the one simple idea is to, can we extend this single resource field cleaning algorithm to achieve fairness in multiple resource settings? Uh, well, according to uh, the, recent, the recent paper, um, it turns out that uh, the single extension does not work. So for example, if you have uh, uh, per resource fairness or the bottleneck fairness, the bottleneck fairness, uh, we mean we let flows to equally share the bottleneck resource of the middle box. If you do this, then it, it's not working. So, um, so the recent paper has also proposed a, uh, a multi-resource fail queuing algorithm called dominant resource fail queuing or DIFQ. And you can show that this algorithm implements near-perfect dominant resource fairness, or DIF, in the time domain. And I will elaborate on this DIF definition later on. So the takeaway message is, 
DIF2 is the only multi resource field cleaning algorithm that have been proposed right now. However, there are some drawbacks of the DIFQ. So, although it is fair in terms of multiple resources, it is relatively expensive to be implemented at high speeds. The reason is it requires a lot of time complexity to make a scaling decision for every packet. Here, n is the uh, uh, number of traffic flows. So, so I, I would like to uh, make add some uh, content. So here, the log n is just a, uh, a theoretical analysis uh, to show the complexity of the algorithm. But the actual implementation complexity could be even higher because we, we need to maintain some complicated uh, data structures. Uh, that would be um, not that easy to be implemented using either hardware or software. And as we have seen, the number of traffic could be very large uh, right now. And, um, the worst thing is that the recent software-defined middlebox innovations may even further aggravate this scalability problem. So, um, and we, we will see that the more and more software-defined middleboxes uh, will be consolidated onto the same component servers. And as a result, um, it is predictable that uh, these uh, servers will see an increasing amount of traffic passing through them. So, in light of this problem, uh, we we in, this, in, this, in this paper, we uh, design a new multi-resource field cleaning algorithm. We call it multi-resource round robin, or MRQ. Um, we show that it achieves a near-perfect fairness of cross flows, and it's very low complexity, with only a constant time complexity to make a scaling decision. And it is also very easy to implement it in practice. So uh, to our knowledge, uh, we, we think this might be uh, the first uh, multi-resource field cleaning algorithm that has these nice properties. So before I introduce the algorithm, let's uh, give a um, let, 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 let's take a look at some preliminaries, okay, uh, to clarify some basic concepts. So first of all, what is the dominant resource fairness? Okay, so when you have multiple resources, you need some fairness notions uh, to indicate the, what do you mean by fair, okay? And it turns out that this DIF is a promising notion that was recently proposed. So here the dominant resource is the one that requires the most packet processing time uh, to, to process a packet, okay? And for example, if you have a packet P that requires one time unit to process for the CPU processing and uh, three time unit for link transmission, then the dominant resource is the link bandwidth. And the DIF simply allows each flow to receive uh, roughly the same processing time on their dominant resources. Um, and you can view it as a maximum fairness on flows dominant resources. Okay. So let's put it in that way. If you have two traffic flows, the so flow one is dominant resource is CPU, the flow two is dominant resource is link bandwidth, then on the DIF, the flow one's processing time on the CPU should be roughly the same at the link transmission time allocated to flow two. So to measure the fairness of uh, a scaling algorithm, we use uh, a matrix called the relative fairness uh, bound, or RFB. So it defines this way. So given any, so arbitrarily, we arbitrarily choose uh, a time interval, T1 to T2, and let the TI, T1 to T2, be the processing time the flow I has received to process its dominant resource during this particular time interval. And then for every time interval, we, 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 uh, well, we, we calculate the difference, the service gap, between any two traffic flows. And we upper bound this service gap. And the, the, the resulting matrix uh, will be used to uh, measure the fairness of the uh, scaling algorithm. So obviously, uh, the smaller the RFB is, which means that the uh, algorithm is much more fair. And <coughs> Our objective is to design a scaling algorithm um, such that its IFB is bounded by a small constant. And on the other hand, it can schedule packets at a very low complexity. So here, we want it to be a constant. Yeah, that, that would be uh, independent of the number of traffic flows, so that it could be uh, very scalable to the large scale traffic. So this kind of design objective sounds uh, very familiar for us in a single resource scenario. When, you, when, you, when we only have a single resource to scan you, then we know that we have a, a, a field cleaning algorithm based on the and robin. Um, so the round robin algorithm um, serves flows in rounds. And in each round, 
each traffic flows will transmit roughly the same amount of bits. <coughs> and to do this, you can use some credit system to check the amount of bits that has been transmitted. And round robin is an ideal single resource for cleaning algorithm because it, it's, it's very fair, it's of low complexity, and for this reason, it has been widely implemented uh, in the high speed routers like the, the Cisco GSR. So the, the natural question is, will the attractiveness of the round robin uh, extend to multiple resource settings? Okay. Um, so let's give some try. So the intuition is, since on the DIF we implement the maximum fairness on the flows dominant resources, then we, we may apply the wrong lobby idea to a flows dominant resources. Okay? So the approach is to maintain a credit system to track the dominant service the flow has received. And we would like to ensure that during each round, the flows will receive roughly the same processing time on their dominant resources. Um, so the credit system, in particular, each flow I will maintain a credit account. You can view it as a banking account. And it will have a balance, a BI, representing the dominant service this flow I is allowed to consume in one round. And whenever a packet P is processed, then we will withdraw the corresponding amounts of credits from this, uh, from this credit account. Um, and, and, and you will see that we deduct the dominant processing time from the BI. And the flow I is allowed to transmit, the, uh, to process the packet as long as it has a positive balance. Um, and when you have served all the flows in one round, the new round will start. But before that, um, all the flows need to update its uh, uh, balance. So basically, all of them will receive the same credit, after which um, they will have a, bad, uh, a positive balance. So, um, however, um, it turns out that such a simple round robin extension does not work. And in the worst case, it may lead to arbitrary unfairness. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. Um, so suppose we have two traffic. The flow one sends packet P1, P2, P3, and flow two sends Q1, Q2, Q3. The dominant resource of flow one is on the CPU, while the dominant resource of flow two is on the link bandwidth. And if you apply the simple round robin extension, it will uh, lead to the schedule uh, looks like the left figure. And if you take a look at its uh, dominant processing time, then you will see it looks like uh, in the right figure. So you'll see that the service gap between these two flows will become larger and larger, and eventually it will uh, lead to an unbounded IFB. So what's the reason? Okay, the reason is, so first of all, we have heterogeneous resource demand. So as you can see, um, these heterogeneous, the, the two flows will require different amounts of resources on different resources. Um, so this will lead to inconsistent work progress on different resources. As we can see, um, in the CPU, it only processes uh, uh, four packets. But uh, when, when four packets have been processed in the CPU, the link uh, can only process just the two packets. So, this, this shows that uh, uh, we might need to modify our algorithm a little bit. Um, so it turns out that the scheduling result that we obtain from the credit system gives us the right scheduling order, but the timing is, is, is basically incorrect. And that requires us to enforce a consistent work progress across resources. So here we have given an extreme a uh, solution that we allow only one packet to be processed at one time. So here, as we can see, we keep the same scaling order produced by the credit system, but, um, but here we will not schedule the next packet until the first packet, until the previous packet has finished processing on all resources. And if you take a look at um, this new schedule, then you will see that the, the, the service gap will be bounded by a small constant. So in that sense, it is fail. But it incurs a significantly high delay with extremely low resource utilization. And this is what we don't want to see. So it turns out that we need some mechanism to enforce the right timing for scheduling. And that is called the process, the progress control mechanism. So the basic idea is to bound the progress gap between any two resources by one drop. 
So suppose we have a packet P that is ready to be processed in a particular round K. And we will check the work progress on the last resource. And we will process this packet P immediately if the flow, this flow is a new arrival, which means that this packet is the first packet of that flow, or this flow has already received the services that are the last resource in the previous round K minus one. And otherwise, we have to wait until the bulk condition uh, it has been satisfied. So if we apply this technique, then uh, we will see the scaling results looks like this. Okay. As you can see, um, the packet Q1 will be, trans will be processed immediately because packet Q1 is the first packet of flow 2. Um, and packet P2 will always be processed immediately because um, its previous packet, P1, has already started um, transmission in the link bandwidth. But for packet P3, the things become different. So although packet P3, we can process it right after the processing uh, of Q2 in the CPU, but we have to wait until the packet P3's previous packet, which is P2, starts to transmit on the link bandwidth. And if you take a look at this um, scaling results, you, you depict its uh, dominant services received by these two flows, you will see that the service is actually bounded, the service gap is actually bounded by a small constant. Okay. So um, to, to summary, um, the, uh, in, in our design, the flows will be served in rounds, and we have a credit system that are applied to flows dominant resources. Um, so that we, uh, we, tra we can track the dominant services the flow has received. And this credit system is actually deciding the scaling order. And the idea is similar to the single resource scenario. But beyond that, we also need a, pro a progress control mechanism just to ensure a relatively consistent work progress across resources. And this can help us to decide the right timing of scaling. And we, we believe this kind of uh, unique component that you need when you have multiple resources. So this turns out to be a simple idea, but uh, it is very easy to be implemented. So for the detailed implementation, please refer to a technical paper. And here I would like to analyze some of its uh, nice properties. So first of all, we can show that it takes all one time capacity to schedule every packet. And it, it's nearly perfect with the relative fairness bound be only a few processing, a, a processing time of a few packets. And it incurs the price we pay in a slightly uh, increased delay as compared with existing BIFQ design. And it is also very easy to implement. Um, we require no priori knowledge about the packet, processing time, and so on and so forth. So in addition to the theoretical analysis, we have also conducted some simulation results to further evaluate the performance of the algorithm. So here we, uh, we, we consider three middle-box models, the uh, basic forwarding, statistical monitoring, and IPC gradient cushion. And the first two modules is bandwidth intensive, while the last one is CPU intensive. And as for the processing time, we use the exact measurement results as uh, ha what have been done in the previous year's SICOM paper. Um, so, the first evaluation is to evaluate the fairness or service isolation of the uh, algorithm. So we uh, divide the 30 UDP flows into three groups. Uh, the group one, each group contains 10 uh, flows, and each of them also contains one load flow. The load flow keeps sending the, the packets uh, with the objective to grab an arbitrary share of the middle box resources. And the group one requires basic forwarding, group two requires statistical monitoring and group three requires IP security encryption. So as we can see from the figure, if we are using some very naive scaling algorithm that first come, first serve, then the three log flows will grab an actual share of the middle box resources. And the resources allocated to the other flows are negligible. Okay. But if you uh, apply in our own algorithm, then we will see that for, for almost uh, uh, all traffic flows, you will receive roughly the same um, middle box resources. So, and then we evaluate the latency. Uh, we consider 150 UDP flows, and we uh, run the existing algorithm BIFQ in our algorithm. And as we can see, uh, for the packet delay, 
we see that the DRFQ is generally uh, good, generally better than, than ours, but it contains a, a relatively uh, long tail for the CDR distribution. Um, so which means that uh, although most of the packets can be uh, processed uh, within a short time of delay, but some of them will, will, will experience a much longer delay. But for now, algorithm, we have sacrificed a little bit on um, the scaling delay, but, um, for, but, but that delay uh, distribution is relatively stable and within a small range. And finally, we have also evaluated the stability of our algorithm. We try different traffic arrival times, we try different package size distributions, and uh, of course, different number of functionalities that are going to be applied to each flows. And based on our results, uh, we will see that our algorithm uh, will give the relatively stable latencies uh, no matter what traffic route pattern that you have um, and package size distribution that, that, that might be. Um, so, as a conclusion, we propose a multi resource run roaming algorithm to evaluate and evaluate its performance both analytically and experimentally. And this is the first multi resource field queen algorithm that achieves uh, nearly perfect fairness. And it is very, uh, it, it, it only requires a constant time capacity to make a scaling decision. But the price we pay is a slight increase of packet latency compared with the existing design. And um, maybe we could extend the algorithm to some other multi resource contests, for example, the VM scaling inside the hyperlines. So that's all for my uh, presentation. Thank you very much.